In a previous video, titled The UN Thugs That Control the Border, I addressed the subject of how most of the people that we call border protection are foreigners. And it's not a surprise when we come into the context of how the UN basically and practically speaking runs most of the systems one way or the other throughout the United States. In this video, I'm going to talk about how these, these border protection people, essentially, their other half runs the local markets. And if you put this into a simple context or a simple way to think about it, is that the UN controlled border protection, they decide what products come into the country. Now, once those products come into the country, they are dispersed through a complicated uh, shell corporation system that ultimately benefits the people who operate these global conglomerates. And there is essentially no market that benefits the locality, but that simply they are local markets which benefit foreign interests in the global conglomeration of corporations. So to start out, we will look at one particular market called the Lancaster Fresh Market, also called the Keller Market, and it is a farmer's market in Lancaster, Ohio, allegedly local. Now, first off, when we look at their board, we find some evidence of the suspicious nature of what is going on. First, there is Kim Sheldon, only listed as a community member, uh, Brad Gowalski, community member, vendor, farm market, Keller Market House manager. But then we look at the treasurer, Amanda Everett, executive director of Destination Downtown Lancaster. Now that group, Destination Downtown Lancaster, another jury against, he would be very worthwhile to look into, but I don't do that in this video. Instead, I like to focus on the one of many strings that relates to the spider web that eventually leaves the United States where you have these local farmers markets that are built to benefit foreign interests. Then we have Elizabeth Baker, owner of BOPS LLC, business intelligence strategist at Network for Life. I'm sure that will, those would be those two groups. They're the BOPS and business intelligence uh, uh, network for life. Those entities are probably worth looking into. But you also have executive director of Lancaster Fairfield County Chamber of Commerce and the mayor of Lancaster on the board. Now, it would be very naive to think that their decisions in so-called government are not based off of their own uh, commercial benefit with their sitting on the board of this market. But this story goes beyond just local corruption. We come to the application for joining one of these markets, of which I was turned down for. No surprise there. And here in a minute, we'll find out why. But more important than the fact that they ask for a proof of insurance for general liability, naming Lancaster Fresh Market Inc. as an additional insured, we should look down at the bottom where it states Lancaster Fresh Market Incorporated. Now, first, this is requiring that people essentially fund the opposition. So if there was a dispute to arise between a vendor and Lancaster Fresh Market Incorporated, well, they would be listed as a beneficiary on the liability insurance, and therefore you would essentially be covering all their expenses if you had a problem with them. So it's literally funding the opposition. But then we look at the bottom, Lancaster Fresh Market Incorporated, and this is the name of the juridic entity under which you will find all of the necessary business filings that lead to this subject. Now, the first piece of evidence that we find would be the Articles of Incorporation for this particular entity. And under the information and details on those Articles of Incorporation, we find the Ohio Valley Agent Corp. Or corporation but anyway that's their name Ohio Valley Agent Corp that's their quote-unquote legal name and it's signed by Brian M Everett and if you remember a certain Amanda Everett 
sits on the board of this Lakester Fresh Market, along with the mayor and executive director of Chamber of Commerce. Next, we come to the business filings for that particular entity, the Ohio Valley Agent Corp. And we find this particular co corporation called, or I guess it's not a corporation, but it's LTD, IBIP, I-B-I-P, LTD. So let's go and look at their business filing. Under the articles for IBIP, or IBIP, however you say that, LTD, we discover something called OSAC Incorporated, O-S-A-C, Inc. And interestingly, when we look up the business filings for OSAC Incorporated, there are no current ones available. There is only one available, and it's very difficult to read, filed in 1992. But since the trail stops there, there is another way we can look into that, into this topic, and that's with the products that are carried at Keller Market House. Under their Google posting, the little blurb that you find when you search them, it states that fine coffee geeks locally produced farm-raised grocery and artisanal goods in stock at Keller Market House in Lancaster, Ohio. Locally produced. That's the main word to focus on here. Now, when we go to the Coffee Geeks main page, we find this relatively well-constructed sort of uh, facade of being local, of this company being owned by a local family that does local things in the interest of local people, and they are very local. It states that we are passionate about coffee. Our dream was to offer excellence, excellent coffee to our customers without it costing half your paycheck to get a good cup of joe. Now, it's interesting is how that's written, cup of joe, right? Most of us would not write that word in that way. And it also comes off like somebody who is trying to seem country, right? cup of joe quotation marks as a joke anyway we recently decided to grow our business and relocated to the hawking hills area we have beautiful three acres and a place for our huge roaster affectionately called rosie so we can bring an excellent quality product to you our customer and it's all just basically more backstory it is interesting at the bottom that states that mike is an it manager at an international business in central ohio but it doesn't just state which international business in central Ohio. It's all very vague. Then, further buried in their page, we get an idea of where their product actually comes from, and that is not, in fact, locally sourced, and that these individuals, if they do exist, are essentially just middlemen. So it states, our main supplier, Volkaf, Revolt Cafe, I suspect it's actually full cafe, and uh, it will make sense why in a minute, undertook a two-year initiative to research and develop a global approach to sustainably sourcing high-quality coffees. They drew on the expertise of their field teams, pooling their collective knowledge and experience to document best practice strategies at Origins. They then developed a former support organization to provide direct technical assistance to producers helping them to improve and to continually improve their coffee quality, farm productivity, and yields. They named this new sustainability sourcing strategy the Volkaf Way. Now, that does not sound like it was written by a quote-unquote local producer. That sounds like it was written by some sort of corporate MBA shill type of individual who talks through code and says a bunch of nonsense, basically. But this other part is not nonsense. In a paragraph, Volcaf Way is now active in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. More than a sustainability strategy, it's the way they do business, taking a root cause, root solution approach, working directly with coffee farmers to assist and train them in sustainable production techniques and good agronomy practices, as well as in making the best uses of their land for future generations. Now, what that sounds like 
is coded language to describe conquest and forcing people to adhere to what they want them to do, obviously for foreign interests. It goes on to say, the Volkhoff or Folkhoff way, well, I suppose Folkhoff way, Farmer support teams help producers to manage risks, improve outcomes, gather data, and focus on measurable results that our green buyer customers can monitor and verify. One of the, oh, notice that. It states that our green buyer customers can monitor and verify. It does seem like this article is actually being written by somebody who works for that corporation and that the Coffee Geek Incorporated one is really just a front, a facade, or a subsidiary of an international conglomerate. One of the flagship training methods is creating business model farms, which provide local learning hubs where surrounding communities can exchange best practices so that they all learn and benefit whether they work directly with Volk Halfway or not. So that's like basically, uh, even if you're not with us, we're still going to control you. So when folks asks us, ask us whether our coffees are part of certification programs that ensure a fair price at the end, our answer is that they're so much more. Volkhoff Vey not only pays fair prices for green coffee, but in more than 2,000 instances, blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and look at the Coffee Geeks LLC business filings. Now notice that these are also done by the Dagger Law Firm, which has done the business filings for all of the other ones. and is a particularly corrupt lawyer outfit of Esquires. That's important. The title of nobility, Esquire, uh, which is also a label for a foreign entity, a foreign agent. Anyway, let's look at their business filing. Now, surprise, surprise, Coffee Geeks LLC, their registered agent, is the Ohio Valley Agent Corps, the exact same one that controls the allegedly independent and locally sourcing farmer's market. Now, there are no business filings in Ohio for Folkhoff uh, Specialty Coffee Corps or Folkhoff Way or any other possible name variations that I could find. Which is interesting because that would be that they're doing business through subsidiaries so that they can hide, as usual, the sort of shell corporation uh, uh, shell game scenario. So uh, under the Virginia business entity system, it states that it's inactive, in Virginia anyway, but that its jurisdiction is Delaware. Now that's not a surprise because nearly all of these juridic schemes always go through Delaware for some reason. However, they are uh, headquartered apparently, or the principal office address is in California. But the registered agent information is the United Corporate Services, Inc., of which I've done other videos talking about those people and their involvements in other similar schemes, and that they are allegedly located in Richmond, Virginia. Now, what's interesting is when we go down to the bottom and we look at the CEO, Jan Kies von der Wield, Techno Park Strass 7 Foreign. That is a CEO of this company with a direct connection to local markets, obviously benefiting from the facade of being a, a local producer. And lo and behold, let's go and look at where Techno Park Strass 7 is located. It is in Switzerland. So... This pattern, I guarantee, you'll find across the nation in nearly every city and every locale where the business filings for all of these entities create only a facade of being locally sourced and local producers and benefiting the local people, when in fact they don't. It is just an image. And when you peel back the image, you find that it always connects to forward interests and usually is funneled through Delaware. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please check out my other content, my other videos, my other channels, my other uh, social media accounts. There are free books available at the link. 
And if you so choose, you may support my work at PayPal or Cash App. Thank you.